Okay, in this video, we're going to do quite a few things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a website that I've recently found that has some free data available. Uh, how to use tools in a batch. Uh, this is really useful if you have to do the same tool over and over again on different shape files. It allows you to do them all at once. So you can leave the computer and go do something else without having to repeat the process over and over again. Then I'm going to show you how to use the shape files we're going to get from this new site to make a time series into a single shape file for multiple shape files. Then we're going to use that new shape file in a time slider project. Now onto the website. It is the U.S. National Ice Center, Naval Ice Center. You can copy down this link if you want, or you can just Google this name. And uh, you can read all about the website if you want. Uh, I'm interested in products. They do a lot of interesting stuff, but what I'm really interested in is the Great Lakes. So our project for this is going to be the Great Lakes ice coverage. So what I want to do is I want to choose the most recent, what they call an ice year. And it starts in the December of 2013 and goes all the way to May 31st, 2014. So with their search feature here, which is really useful compared to some other sites, I get to put in the days that I'm interested in. The only area I can choose is the Great Lakes. Uh, and I want daily ice concentration. And they tell you me what formats are available. And ASCII is a sort of like a text document um, that you can import into ArcMap and create rasters or even shape files. Um, metadata, is, we'll come back and look at that because I want to show you some stuff. Uh, but I'm interested in the shape files because why make a shape file when they're already available? Then you just hit submit. Uh, I don't want to translate this. And as you can see, these are all shape files for each day between December 1st, 2013. Uh, the code they use is GL for Great Lakes, 13 is the year, uh, 12 is the month, and zero one, or the last two digits are the, the day. So there's a number of ways of going about downloading this. You can sit here and click these individually. You can contact them and ask for maybe a zip package. I don't know if they charge for that. Uh, some places are, if you work for an organization, are normally pretty good with sending you that. But Everyday Joe, not so much. Uh, there's also some programs you can install in your browser uh, that manage downloads where it's just you click on it and it finds all the links on the page that go to, to files and allows you to download them all at once. Um, use the Google to search for those, and be sure to look at reviews. You don't want to download one and have it be like malware. So um, I already went and downloaded all these. Uh, it could take you a while, so if you want to do them all, feel free. But if you only want to do a few, that's, that's, all, that's okay. But at least try to get 5 to 10. Now with that done, uh, they come as zipped, so you're going to have to unzip them. Uh, also, there's programs on that you can download that, that do that really quickly and allow you to place them all in one folder. Uh, once again, use Google for finding out which program is best for you. So we're going to start by adding our data. 
and I placed mine in a folder called uh, gl underscore ice underscore coverage underscore 13, even though it goes into 14. Uh, then I'm going to select everything and add it. I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to open up the attribute table. And before we get any further in, let's just jot down the time it is. Say we started a minute ago, so 721. And we're going to open up this attribute table. And none of this really makes sense um, just by looking at it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our little nifty website, click on metadata, and go to submit. And I'm just going to click on one of these. And I'm going to click on attributes. And here it tells you the name of those attributes. Some of them are very helpful. But some of them do tell you the definition. Like this is a total concentration of all ice in the area. So back to our map. We're looking at this one, so if we open this up, go to categories, uh, because they are categories, they are not quantities, because the only quantities in here are shape length and area. So go to categories, CT, and then click apply. Now this red right here is saying that in that area, about 10% of it is ice. At least that's what I'm getting from, from their definition. Now CA is partial concentration of thickness. So... I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, stage of development of thickness, probably if it's strong or, or weak ice. Form of ice corresponding to SA. And you can go through these, but the ones I'm interested in is this total concentration of all ice in the area. So I'm just going to put this back to what it was but we're doing a time series and if you look in here there is no time field uh, why put a time field if there's just the one year, day for each shape file so you could go in here and go to add field and do that for six months of data doesn't sound very nice, does it? So we're going to come down here. We're going to go to Fields and add a field. And we're going to right-click on it and do a batch. I'm going to click on this and then right-click and go to Browse. I'm going to add all my shape files. And if you wanted to do it the hard way, there's 181 you'd have to do. So we're going to enter a field name. And whenever I do a time series, I always make the this field uh, date code. And then you just right click it and fill. And it just puts it down the rest of the column, which is really helpful because it prevents you from doing uh, typos. If you miss a letter or add an extra letter, it can come back to bite you. And I'll show you when later on. So the rest are kind of uh, optional. Uh, we want it as a long integer, so we're just going to leave that field type what it is. 
and then we're just going to click OK. Now it is 726 right now. So we're going to let this run. As you see, all our shape files are locked. Can't do anything with them. So it's honestly, right now, it's best not to do anything in ArcMap. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity, you know, if you're ever doing a project to switch over and do something else. Maybe go get a cup of coffee, a drink, stretch your legs, look at the sun. You will get this not responding sometimes when uh, ArcMap is thinking a lot. And if you get click happy or try to do something, like you get afraid and you try to save, it can cause it to think too much and crash. So it's best not to mess with it. Just let it do what it needs to do. Now this might seem like it's taking a really long time, but just look at this way. I'm not really doing anything. It's doing all the work. Um, imagine if you were to, you know, constantly have to click this tool or go into an attribute table and add a field, type in name, choose what you want it to be, have to worry about typos. There we go. We started this at 726. It's now 729. If you go to the geoprocessing, open up the results, open up messages, go all the way to the bottom. This says it, is it finished. At 27 minutes, so and it started at 26. So it probably did freeze there for a bit, but it still was a lot quicker doing it this way than going in individually. So now, you have this date code, but there's no values. So you could go in and right click, field calculator, put the date in, or calculate field, batch, right click, browse, add all our shape files. Choose the field we want to create an expression in, which is date code. Click off it, then right click it again, use fill, that very useful little tool there. And now for expression. Now this, you could go down and do the dates here, or I can show you a way to do it even quicker. So highlight all those and open up Excel. Right click on the numbers over here and choose copy. And open up Excel and paste them. And then make it to where you can see them. Now they don't put the headers, so be careful when doing this. Make sure you come back and make sure you put it in the right uh, box or you can have a bad day. 
Now over here, I know that this is December 1st, 2013. So I'm going to write that over here. And then I'm going to click and drag down here. Now, as you can see, this ends May 31st, but we have May 30th here. That means something's missing. Um, I didn't catch this the first time through. So if you go all the way up to January, you will see we're missing the 8th. It goes from 7 to 9. So I'm just going to click on where it says the 8th, change that to 1-9-2014. Go all the way down. And now it matches. I'll show how to repair this so that when we do our time slide, we don't have a day where it just goes blank. Now, you can use a format like this in ArcMap. I don't, I like using the eight digit um, code, which is year, year, or year four digits, then two for month and two for day. And if it's, you know, 2014, December 1st, you know, that would be January 1st, 2014. You put the zeros in as padding. Now, Excel doesn't really have this as a date format, but you can create it really simply. Uh, so we're just going to right click, format cells. custom and for this you just write in by four times and you see up in the sample it comes up 13 mm for month 12 pops up and dd for day then you just click ok then you just right click copy and do this paste if you do values you get those numbers uh, those are julian day so do that paste, then select everything, copy it, go back to your, your tool, and right click, paste, and voila, you just saved yourself from having to type all those dates. Uh, code block is optional, VB is uh, Visual Basic, I think, and we just keep it that. So and with that done, we just press OK. Everything's locked up and running. Now, even with this freezing as much as it is, and, you know, kind of hip cupping, you can't deny that it is actually a lot quicker than opening up these individually and using the field calculator, or calculate field tool. Once again, when this happens, just don't touch anything. If you do, it'll kind of do that white screen or gray out and 
window will pop up saying ArcMap is not responding, and then you will have an issue and you'll have to close it. Why this is doing its thing, we can check out this website a little bit more. Uh, let's go to products. Uh, see what they got here. Uh, nothing really. Oh, let's check some earlier years. There we go. Oh, our tool's ready. So, you know, it ran. Let's see how long it says it took. You know, it says 29 seconds. Of course, it froze a lot of those, but... A lot longer than it took, but... Still a lot quicker than going in individually. Now we're going to take care of our missing day and to do that I'm just going to choose one of these open it up and add a field and I'm just going to call it you know no data make it a short integer Field calculator, just going to give it a value of 1. I could have left it 0, actually, but... Then I'm going to go up to Geoprocessing and Dissolve. I'm going to choose that one. And I'm going to choose to dissolve it based on the no data. And I'm going to save this where I have all my other data. So this, and I'm going to use the name so that it goes in here with these guys. But I'm just going to change it to an 8. And I'm going to open it up again. And I'm going to add a field called date code long integer. And field calculator. And we're going to use hmm. actually that won't work um, I will show you how this will work though um, when we do our time slider but we, we need this one uh, where it is Hmm. Actually, open at field CT, and I believe they're text, but let's just double check properties. There's string.
so field calculator yes no data oh yeah I forgot when uh doing using field calculator to add text you have to have parentheses around it I always forget that and it's kind of annoying because it yells at you okay now we have all our shape files. This was better with the other years that I did because they all had continuous years or continuous days. So now we can merge these into one shape file and we're going to do that by going to geoprocessing and merge. Then we're going to come down here. Or you could select them all like that, but I'm just going to come in here. Select them all this way. Now, it's important to check out what fields you have. Uh, as you can see, the one I added as a CT is still a CT in here. There's not two of them, so that means that it should join pretty, pretty good. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this in here as ice coverage. Actually. GL ice coverage 2014 and save. So it's changed up here. Then we click OK. Let's check how we're doing for time. So it has been roughly 22 minutes. Now, by merging these, you're not going to be able to see all the polygons at the same time because they're going to be overlaying on top of each other. So this shapefile we're creating is only good for a time series uh, with the time slider. Otherwise, it's pretty useless. I mean, you could use definition query to show, you know, pick a, a, a day. Now, well, when doing a merge on shapefiles, these can get very large, and what we just got was an error. And when we go to results and see what that error is, you know, ah, could not do no data. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put a value in there that's... Uh, Bit different. So we'll open field calculator. We'll do a uh, negative nine. Uh, negative nine or negative nine 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 or negative nine. So many nines is normally what they use for no value. Um, mainly for reasons like this. I'm not sure if this will work. We'll try again. Hopefully it will work. I created one, but it wasn't right. So...
just try this again. Save it as the same thing, but as version 2. And I'll open up that one to see what it looks like. Uh, maybe we could have just went in and, you know, changed something. But yeah, um, failed on input. Zero could not write. Okay. See, you probably didn't run into this issue if you only downloaded about 10 or 15 of them. Or picked a year where they had all data. But this is a very interesting year. We had a lot of ice coverage on the Great Lakes. So I think it'll be a cool time series to look at. Uh... Some years it's not very much, you know, Lake Erie will get a lot of coverage, but the other ones only on some of the, the shallower ends and up here where the water area is not as, not as big. But even with these errors that I've had, some people would probably still be on the adding field portion. So, when it comes to this is your job, these little tips are really helpful because they make your work go by a lot quicker. So it makes you both look better as an employee and more valuable because you can actually, you know, work quick. Hey, it worked. Hooray. So we're going to open it up. We got 14,219 features in here. So those are all separate little polygons. And that's not even the most. I've had some that are like in the millions. It's been insane. But um, if you ever get an error and it's like 9999 and you know that you're dealing with very large shape files that you're merging try creating a file geo database <clears throat> and saving it in there you will get an error if the shape file becomes too large and it won't tell you that's the problem um, I've had this happen to me and it's a huge headache so now that this is all in here we can select all these other ones and get rid of them and why won't it let me select them all? There we go. Remove. I'm going to add the, the first one that I attempted to do and see just what that did. Yeah, we only got the 3,257. So, obviously a lot of polygons are missing. So, that would have been wrong. So now that we have this, we can go into the properties, symbology, categories, because we're dealing with categories, and go to CT. And if we just kept it this way, people would be like, you know, what's negative nine? So we're just going to change that to be no data. Uh, zero is obviously none. 1 to 10, I'm, per, I'm assuming these are percentages. Uh, we're going to group those and just call it 10. Let me get a class. I'm going to do the same with the 90s. Once again, if you're going to use this for a project, you might want to contact them. Make sure that these are percentages. Okay, and we come up here, properties for all, I want no boundary, 
and I want to make a unique one. So I'll come here. Oh, um, to change this, you just pick a one that goes from one color to another and right click and go to properties and you can choose what colors are used. Water is blue, so I'm going to pick a blue color and ice is, well, when you think of ice, you think of white. So, and, ah, the reason that happened is because one of these were selected still. So we're just going to do that again. Little things that can be annoying, but everyone does them. So as you can see, as you get to 90, it gets white. Now it's hard to see with a white background, so we're going to go in here, go to, go to properties for our layer, go to frame, and give it a background. Nothing says land like sand. Uh, if you want, you can change it to something darker so you can see the contrast a little bit better. Um, but that kind of gives it like a natural look. If you wanted, you could even put uh, ortho imagery behind it. So let's pick maybe a dark gray. There. That way it really sticks out. Now we're going to go to our time tab and enable time on this layer. Then you want to calculate. Now it tries to pick the days. I want it to be every day. And here it's already set to mine. But as you can see, you can do just year, year, day. And then I'm just going to click OK. Let it do its thing. Then I'm going to click on this guy, the time slider option. And go into options, time extent, time playback. Right now it's on faster. I'm going to put it kind of slow because it's only uh, six months. And then I'm going to click play. And as you can see, we've created a little movie. And you can see that the lakes got really icy. Now it is May and there is still ice out there. Uh, I did make one mistake. I left no data. Something. So, I should make that black. And just because that was really cool and I liked it, I'm going to play it again. There's our no data. And you can export this as a video file, and then you can use it you know, in any editing software to include things. Um, but that's it for this tutorial. And as you can see, we started at 721. It is now 756. And we created, we went from multiple shapefiles to creating a field for 182 shapefiles. Calculating their fields. Merging them. And creating a time slider project in less than an hour. So that just goes to show you how useful these batch tools can be and how using Excel can be a way of doing things a little bit quicker as well. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.